Hello, YouTube space of land. Welcome back to another Kobe video. Today we are going to be looking at a tank that was made in America, made with a gigantic gun in Great Britain. We are, of course, talking about the Sherman Firefly. But before we get on with the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That will be rather spiffy of you. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Boom shakalaka. So, of course, yes, the, the Sherman was designed to be mass-produced, overwhelm enemy, enemies, and kill everyone in sight. Well, it, it done pretty damn well on the battlefield in regards to small personnel people, but unfortunately, when it actually came to German tanks, it was a little bit more of an issue. I think it was somewhere within the range of nine Sherman tanks against one Tiger tank not exactly what you call fair odds, but the Tiger tank generally came out pretty damn good with it. So the British said to the Americans, you need a bigger gun on that one. And the Americans go, no, 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 no. We will keep overwhelming them. And well, uh, the, the British decided to go, we're gonna slap a 17 pounder on it. And that's exactly what they did. They slapped a 17 pounder on it and well produced it and then sent them off to Poland and the Australians and well, obviously very well known for in the British Army as well. Now, the only reason why it's called the Firefly is because when it actually fired the muzzle, the muzzle at the front, it produced a certain glow at the front of it. Pretty cool. Um, but yes, that's, uh, that 17 pounder produce uh, was actually turned out to be rather effective in battle. It did manage to hold its own against many tank, Panzer tanks and also the legendary Tiger tank. So, yes, on, on of course, don't forget, it did have, it did still share the same problems as the normal Sherman tank because the armor did roughly stay the same. So it was a medium tank and, well, yes, if it got hit by a Tiger tank, your day's not looking too good, I'm afraid. But this was pretty damn good. Anyway, let's actually have a look at the Kobe tank. Let's see how accurate it is compared to the real deal. Um, and it does come with two minifigures in this one. So we'll have a little gander at those ones as well. So let's have a little butchers. So here we have the actual Kobe set itself. So this actually contains exactly 100% 500 parts. Not a part less. Well, that's not entirely true because it does come with a few extra little bits and bobs inside there. Like all sets do. But here we have the Sherman Firefly. And yes, that gun is as big as it looks. You know, it is, well, rather impressive, I must admit. But um, yeah, it comes with several nice little features, as you would expect with a tank. So a full 360 degree rotation on it. Um, it's got the nice little indentation of the, the 7.62 millimeter Browning machine gun, just there as a nice little hole. Um, so on the front here, yes, you do get these lovely little skis on the front here, as always, um, with uh, Kobe sets. They generally are prints on the front here. So, and you get some really nice prints on either side of here. So this actually has the American numbers on it, which is not entirely true because the Americans never really done it, but it still is the M4 Sherman tank. So I see what they've done there. Um, so you do get a nice little hatch up top here for your commander and there's the minifigure and it is a RAC Royal Tank uh, Royal Tank Engineer right there and you get a nice little hatch up there for him to stand in and it does actually close up as well so yeah you can have that so when they do decide to go into combat you can well throw him out of the tank and pretend that he's inside there. Uh, you do also get two little positions down here as well where you can put other minifigures in there so you can put your drivers in there as well so that's pretty damn cool um they don't quite fit in there as well as you like to think they would but you can break them in half and put them in there and they will fit in there quite nicely you do also get this other minifigure here so he's a polish soldier um he is supposed to have a machine gun but my daughter's got at this set and as always it, it, it kind of disappears unfortunately but there we go um coming around the back uh you get this another nice little print around the back here's a nice little ventilation there as well for the engine that goes on inside here which they do actually have inside there so you do have in there a chrysler multi-bank 425 horsepower engine sitting right on inside there there you go Coming on down the side here, you know, you get some nice little attract details and also all the little bits and bobs. And, you know, they do work. They do work just not very well on this surface. You know, they do sort of, but even if you put a little bit of weight on them, 
yeah, it just kind of slides. So on something like a sofa or rug or something like that, it will work really well. Um, so you do get some nice little headlights on the front here as well. I forgot to mention that. And of course, being that this is also a British tank as well, we've got to have our brake lights put on the back here as well. Safety first, chaps. For safety first. We oh my god. So the Sherman Firefly in KB form, in KB brick form. Um, pretty cool. It comes in at 35 quid for 500 parts. So, and you get some nice little prints on here as well. And it is really solid as well. You know, you can be pretty rough with it and no problems there. And also don't forget, it is an amazing display piece as well. So if you are a fan of um, military vehicles and you want to put them on display, it's a pretty good build. Uh, like all tanks, the tracks are probably the most time consuming part to do it because they are all individual links. There's about 55 of them on either side. So yeah, it does take a bit of time. Little food for thought, if you do build this one, leave two out on either side because otherwise it's very, very loose down the bottom here. And believe me, I have tried like leaving it loose and they still don't spin that well on a shiny surface. So there is that. Uh, but overall, it's a really, really nice set. It sits quite nicely next to my other tank collection. And I really like it. Um, the minifigures, as always, you kind of hit and miss on those ones, but they do have some nice prints on there, nevertheless. Um, and, and I do like the little features that it comes with it. And yeah, I'm able to move the turret up pretty damn well. Um, it's got a good amount of friction on it as well. So if you do want to kind of leave it left vertically up or down, yeah, it will stay in any kind of position. It has got some good amount of friction on that one. So the Kobe Sherman tank, did you buy it? Or are you thinking about buying it? Are you tempted to buy it? Um, because it is actually pretty damn cool. I do really quite rate and rave it. You know, it's a decent size and all that kind of stuff. But let me know down in the comment section below, what do you think about the set? Um, are you tempted or are you gonna buy it and just think it's to hell with it? I need this on my shelf. Let me know, honestly, I love hearing all your comments. Thank you very much. And don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you all next time. Bye bye. So yeah, that is the Sherman Five. What are you doing? <laughs> Just knock the track off.